basically, in my bio there, you might have heard, I've spoke to quite a few of you already, I've only been in the game for four and a half months. That, to some people in this room, could be a source of, well, why do I want to go to him? He obviously doesn't know what he means. Um, anyone that knows me would tell you I'm, I'm a sponge. I love to soak up information. I go away from these meetings most weeks learning something new. I go away, I don't know exactly what you might have been talking about, I'm straight on Google, I'm straight on Wikipedia. I love to know exactly what's going on in the world, I love to know exactly what people are talking about. And that is what I want to do for you. I want to be able to, for you to come to me and say, well, I need help with this, I need help with this, in that aspect of what you do. I might not know at the time, and I, w I won't lie to you, I'll say to you, I might not be able to help you directly, but someone within our company can. And that's what I want to be able to put across to you. I want you to have faith in me that I'll be able to go away and help you. So, Belvoir Lettings, what are we? We are a residential lettings company. We're a franchise. We operate at South End, Basildon, Grays and Romford. Um, what I wanted to do this morning was put across a few key as aspects of Belvoir. I wanted you to be able to go away and hopefully be able to get me some referrals to be able to help me to do what I need to do. Um, now, one of the key aspects of letting, there's two sides to it, to what we do. We do a fully managed service and we do a let only service. Half of you in the room, probably most of you don't know what that means. So, I'd like to take the time to explain that to you today. Um, if you know a landlord or if you are a landlord and you come to us and you say, right, I've just bought a property, I want, I want to let it out. I'm happy enough managing it at the moment, I just want you to find me a tenant. Well, what do we do for that? With our let only service, we use our own source of advertising. We've got our own website, we've got our own window displays. We also advertise on Right Move because that's what everyone uses these days. Um, we will also, once we've found you a tenant, we will fully reference and credit check them. That means we will check where they've been living for the last three years. We check with their previous landlords, be it an agent or private. As long as that comes back okay, we move on. We will then check what they've said their earning is, is true. We'll go to their employers, past and present, check what they say their earning is right, whether they've ever had any problems with their jobs, anything like that. We look back into it for you. We don't want someone moving into your property who isn't suitable. Um, at this point, as long as that's gone through, all through okay, we will then look at credit checking them. Now, we do use Experian, but it's not as in-depth as, say, if you was to go out and apply for a loan, apply for any sort of credit. It basically, again, tells us that what they've stated on their forms is true. We always ask whether they've got any CCJs, any adverse credit. That all comes back on the forms. Um, once this is all back into us, we can then go ahead and look at moving them into your property. But we don't just make sure they look good on paper. At the end of the day, we would have met you as a landlord. We would have sensed what you want. You could have told us, you know, exactly the sort of person. You might only want a working professional. Now, someone might be working, but they might not be a good suit for you. We obviously use our discretion to, to make sure that we've got a perfect fit for your property. We don't just want someone that looks good on paper. They could go in and trash your property. We want to make sure it's looked after for you. Um, now, with the let-only service, that would be near enough where we finish. We would obviously get them in. We would write up the contracts for you, get them in to sign that, take their monies, and that's pretty much where we leave it. It's then over to you. There's nothing to say that you can't add on to that. You may not want us to manage your property, but you may want us to do a few extra things for you. We can do things such as we can go in and do an inventory for you. Now, I mentioned before about deposits. Um, an inventory is key for a deposit, really. If for any reason at the end of a tenancy you come to a dispute, that inventory is going to be the difference between you getting your money back or not. Um, as I said before in my 60 seconds, a deposit does have to be registered with a, depo a tenancy deposit scheme. There are three main um, schemes running in the UK. Now, as a landlord, if you don't register this, this deposit, you're liable to be fined up to three times the amount of, of the deposit. Um, the reason I've mentioned today is I've had a, uh, had a conversation with a woman who came over to us with some information. Um, and when this, this new law came in uh, about registering a deposit, she actually had a tenant in a property already um, who had his 12 month tenancy was up, and she asked if he'd like to go onto a rolling contract. He said no, knowing that this new legislation had come in, and she didn't know about it. He got her to, um, to make him sign another 12 months, and as soon as he knew she hadn't registered his deposit, he went ahead and sued her. Just because she, you know, she was a little old lady and she didn't know any better. Um, we obviously don't want to see those things happen to you. you know, we, w these deposits, if you want us to register the deposit as an agent, we can do that for a small fee. Um, 
maybe you just want us to collect the rent for you. Maybe you don't want your property fully managed, but you want us to, to collect the rent. We can do that as well. There are all sorts of things that we can tailor make around you to make sure that you're getting what you want from us. Um, now, with a fully managed service, obviously everything I've mentioned there is included, <coughs> but the fees are slightly different. We will obviously manage the property from start to finish. If there's any maintenance works that needs to be done, that's what we take care of for you. We ask you to sign to allow us, um, sorry, to authorise us to do works up to a certain amount, say £250. So if there's any works that need doing up to amount, we'll carry it out. It's deducted from the rent, and then you don't have to worry about that. Obviously, anything bigger than that, we will put across to yourselves. Um, the fees, how they work for the two services. If it's a let only, we do just a one-off fee, which generally works out to about three weeks' rent plus VAT. You pay that on the day we get you a tenant, nothing up front, that's done. Uh, if it's a managed service, we ask for a slightly lower fee, normally around 395 plus VAT, but we normally take 10% a month. Obviously, where we have landlords that we have quite a few properties with, we are negotiable on that, we like to make everyone happy. Um, now, what you could be thinking of is, well, you know, why can't I go out and do all this myself? It's surely got to be cheaper to do all this myself. Um, we've actually taken statistics from a landlord's website that basically broke down the costs of doing everything yourself compared to uh, having an agent do it for you. Now, from what you can see here, the, over, the overall end thing ends up that it is slightly cheaper when you look at it that way to do it to what an agent might be. But this doesn't take into account your time. You, you, could be, you could be a business person, you could have a lot going on in your life. We put here, viewings four hours at £20. It may cost you £20 an hour to go ahead and do a viewing, but then you've got your petrol costs, you've got whatever time you need to take away from your business. All these new things need to be taken into account, and when you do actually sit down and analyse it, it might be better off for you to get, to get an agent in to manage, or at least do your viewings for you at the very least. A subject I've touched on many times, I'm sure you're absolutely fed up of hearing about by now, but investing in Essex, it is a big thing and there's a lot going on. As I've put up the top here, DP World, you've heard me mention this many and many a time. It's the London Gateway, it's going to create 42,000 jobs within the area. Um, as well as bringing a new deep sea port to the area, it's also going to bring Europe's largest logistics port. Um, now, the problem is with this, 42,000 jobs coming into the area, they're going to need homes. At Belvoir, we are dealing directly with staff relocations. The problem we're looking at at the moment, Thurrock Council have allocated 18,000 homes towards this. Basin and Southend haven't allocated any new homes to be built for this. So this leaves, this leaves a shortfall of quite a lot. How is this going to affect Essex? Property prices may go up, rent values may go up. We don't know this, but it's something to look at. If you know potential investors who are looking to get into something, now is the time to do it. We have a fantastic team within this BNI group. People here that can help with all aspects of it. You've got Mr. Flavin, you've got Helen, you've got myself, you've got Mick. Any, any aspect of that, we can help. And I'd like to think we've got a great team here to be able to, to help out with these investing things. Um, a new one that I found out about recently was Saxon Park. I didn't actually know much about this, which is next to Southend Airport. Um, and it's going to be 99,000 square metres of business park. So lots of new businesses coming into the area. Um, also, Paramount Studios, I don't know if anyone's heard about this. Um, it's in Gravesend, but it will impact on Essex. Um, there's a five-minute foot ferry that's going to be coming into the area. It's going to create 27,000 jobs. It's going to be the third, third biggest theme park in Europe. Um, I realise my time is coming to a close, so... I'll wrap it up there. Um, if anyone's got any questions, I'd love to hear them. Hopefully I can help them out. <coughs> yes, Kevin. Oh, I was just going to ask, how easy is it for somebody to change their letting agent over to Belvoir? It's, it's not difficult at all. Obviously, if you're unhappy with the agent you're with, um, you would have signed a terms of business with them. Best thing to do is go through that, see what you're, you're tied into. Normally, you're not really tied into anything. If you're not happy with the service it is, come to us, we can help you change that over, it's not a problem. We'll always try and obviously match what you're paying, if not be, we'll, we'll try and do the best service we can. We don't. If you've been unhappy with someone else, it's quite a, a relatively easy changeover. We're there to help you every step of the way with it. If you've got a good deposit halfway through the agreement, can you then go and put it in that secure place halfway through? Um, if, some, if someone's come to you with a deposit halfway through, that can be registered then. Um, 
it it can be a bit sort of up in the air. The, the deposit scheme may want to know what's registered halfway. We have dealt with things where, um, in particular, a particular agency um, closed down, and some of the tenants managed to get their deposits back, and they came to us to register it. <coughs> Same with the landlords; they managed to get their, their deposits back. It is possible to be registered at, at any point within the tenancy. Preferably, the start of the tenancy is better, but there are ways around it. What do you do then if if your property's been rented way, way before? this deposit scheme was ever introduced? Um, it would have been made, there was a leeway when this uh, deposit scheme came in for a time to allow landlords to register that. Um, so they would have had X amount of time to go in and get it registered. It, the, the information was there, it was made really available to everyone. Um, which, it, like I said, for instance, there was one particular woman got caught out because her tenant knew more than she did. Um, but you can register it at that point when the scheme came in. It wasn't a problem. Was it issue? Uh, no, it was. I, I couldn't think exact dates. Um, someone else around the table, maybe I'll tell them. Well, I'll go. <laughs> 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 there we go. Brad, just, just a quick question for you. Um, you've obviously been with individuals. <coughs> do you do discounts for property landlords with more than one or two properties? Is that a good thing for you? Or yes, it, it's a fantastic thing for us. Um, we actually have a couple of landlords at the moment. We have one landlord we have 28 properties with, um, other landlords we have more with. It's, it's absolutely brilliant for us. We, Obviously, you down there, by doing more yeah, of course, of course we do. Um, we we've got one, like I said, one landlord at the moment. I think we do about thirty-two properties for him, and he's got quite a big discount as well. Um, we're not where we're a franchise. You know, ten percent is our guideline. But obviously, if someone comes to us with, with 10, 15 properties and says, "Well, I don't want to pay ten percent," we're obviously flexible on that. We don't want to just turn them away because we're stuck to one number. You know, we can move on that. If you was if you're currently paying eight percent and you wanted to come over to us, we'd we'd be more than happy to try and match that. We'd come as close as we can to it. Okay, so you leave there.